Hi, everyone. Welcome today to our Departures Lounge Travel Show. We're really excited today to have uh, another new speaker. It's our first show back after the holidays, and we hope that you'll really enjoy what we have to talk about today. So we'd like to introduce you to Colin Price. Colin's with us from Royal Caribbean International Cruise Lines, and he's going to talk to us today a little bit about what's exciting in the new world of travel since, um, since post-COVID, once we get back to traveling and also um, mostly, more importantly, talking about what's really exciting with um, family travel and bubble travel, since that's what we're all gonna be excited to do once we can actually get back together again. So Colin, welcome to our show today, and let's, um, let's hear what you have to tell us about. Awesome, well, thank you so much for having me here, Kathy. I really appreciate it. Uh, I was kind of looking back at the calendar of how long I've been in the cruise industry, and this is my 24th year in the cruise industry. Uh, so that time has really flown. And I, I started thinking back of when I really, what made me want to start getting into the cruise industry. And it was actually talking about multi generally travel was how I actually started. So I'm just going to show you this first image here. Oh, is that sliding across here? Here it is. That was one of my first cruises as a, a little young gaffer myself. Uh, so my, I was very fortunate. My family loved to cruise. So I love this experience myself, uh, traveling with my family and my, my parents, friends and their kids as well was an awesome way. So I've kind of grew up in that industry. Um, with that, I find that I was like, now I have a two-year-old myself. And I wanted to kind of take that to the next level as well. So this is uh, myself, my wife, and my son, Jackson. And this was his first cruise. Um, one of the rules with cruising, I think it's pretty much across every cruise line, you have to be at least six months of age to cruise. So he was six months and one day in order to get on board this cruise. So uh, we did an Alaska cruise, just uh, convenient out of our own backyard, obviously. Uh, I'm based in Vancouver, so just down the road. But this was a great easy vacation for us just to be able to hop on with a little toddler and experience walk around where of course you know with Alaska you could do anything you want there. there's so many adventure pieces of travel to do but with a with a little one we were just happy walking around the town we did the train ride experience as well but it was kind of a really cool way for just an easy trip so we were feeling a little bit bold we actually took them on to a trip to uh, Toronto as well as a trip to uh um, New Zealand. And then what we were looking at is the multi-generational tr travel at the end of the year. So not this December, the past December. And we took the whole family down to Cabo San Lucas for Christmas at the time. And that is always fun when you're traveling with a, I think there was about 14 in the end run of us all that were down there. So here's a few different photos of uh, the multi-gen travel. And it's so interesting on how different trips and the different atmospheres give you the different styles, for example. So one of the funny things that with a cruise is that you don't have to worry about who's picking up the bill and who's paying for that drink over there. It's just all taken care of, or it's just one little extra level of where are we going to dine tonight? Where are we going with a cruise? I found it's a little more streamlined, a little bit easier. You're able to plan further in advance. So when you're on board the ship, it's just smooth sailing. So I think my family's agreed. They like to do a, a Mexico trip maybe every third year, but we're doing a cruise every every year in between. So that was just a little bit of our, our own kind of past, how I got into it and how I, I vacation as well. So talking on a, a Royal Caribbean side though, the way if you haven't traveled with Royal Caribbean before, the best way I can describe our brand is quality meets energy. You're gonna see it kind of throughout a few of the slides that I'm showing you. I'm not gonna go too deep on certain things like the entertainment and stuff, but I'll kind of tiptoe around it, okay? Um, we are 50 years bold. I love that we're not 50 years old, we're 50 years bold. So I'm now 41 years bold myself. <laughs> Uh, so I love this picture. You can see one of our first ship that, and it kind of how it's morphed into what the Symphony of the Seas is, which is now the largest cruise ship in the world, which is absolutely impressive. The elephant in the room, of course, what about safety, traveling with your family, traveling you with your friends? What, what is its scope? And I, I don't know how you feel, but when I look at TV, it seems everybody's an expert, right? So we figured let's just hire them all. So we went and hired all the top people. We actually partnered with one of our competitor lines because when it comes to safety, this is a place that nobody in the cruise industry claims that they do it better than another. We all are on that equal playing form. We all share what we're doing. We wanna make sure that we are delivering the safest experience, 
safety is priority number one for all of us across the board. So our competitor and us partnered to create this panel. And if you're just to look at all the letters behind their names, like their, the, their backgrounds are incredible, these microbiologists, and they are really fine tuning. And I think for a lot of these guys that hadn't cruised before, I think it was an eye opener of how impressive we all are and what we do on ships, one already in place, and two, how we can adapt to make it to that next level. Our main goal is to be better than what you would get at home within our North American systems. So quick little short overview I thought I'd show you really quickly was our health and sale plan. It's basically five simple steps. A lot of this stuff was essentially happening already, but we've just kind of geared it up. So obviously now you're going to get a test before you're cruising. We're going to scan, make sure everybody's uh, heat and everything before getting aboard. You're going to notice these little sensors here. Uh, they're actually located all around the ship in the different lounges. So as we're going in, we're scanning people and checking just to make sure that everything's on, on, on the, the right. Everything from even the kids club, it was impressive. I was watching one of the videos of our ships that are cruising currently in Singapore. And as you enter the kids club, you'd see them, they would take off their shoes as they would enter in. They would have them wash their hands to make sure, double check their heat. So again, it's, it's honestly, it's fabulous actually. So I wish we'd been doing this. Well, some of it we have been doing before, right? So um, I'll kind of get to that as well. So where I was gonna say some of it, what we've been doing before, Kathy, we were talking about this earlier, weren't we with the, um, Purell stations. I mean, no matter what cruise line you went on for 20 years, you've had to Purell your hands when you walk into that buffet area. And uh, it's like the rest of the world has just caught up that now you're going to do it when you walk into Earl's or Cactus Club or whatever restaurant you're going to, for example. So uh, a few years ago, we, we, got a, we took a lot of our guest feedback about the Purell stations and a lot of people saying they didn't like the Purell. So we actually started building our ships with wash your hand stations. So as you enter the buffet area, we have these wash your hand stations and we actually have a person, their job title literally is washy washy. They're, they, they just make sure that you washy washy, clean clean as you, <laughs> as you go in. Uh, so I love this as well. Uh, another talk track I never would have had to talk about before, but uh, the ventilation again. So we've already had this in place. Our ventilation wasn't going from stateroom to stateroom. It was already going back to that HVAC system and doing a full purification. So they've just really enhanced and turned up the dial on that as well. So, and then of course we've um, sectioned off parts of our ship. So if there was an emergency, we actually had a, a scenario recently in Singapore, we had one of our cruises and uh, 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 somebody basically tested positive for COVID in uh, late night. And when everybody woke up in the morning, our ship was docked back in Singapore. We had already worked with the local officials. Singapore was very aware, they understand. Again, we part, we're going to destinations that are gonna work with us if we have a situation. But we're able to quarantine off a certain section of the ship. So we take the family members, whoever's traveling, you're all gonna go together, treated well, et cetera. And then by what I actually found out, it was a false positive on that after all. So- Oh, what uh, a drag. But, it, <laughs> but, it, but you know what, it was great. And it was actually funny, not funny, but the local media stations were actually all on board to experience and see how we jump into action and what happens. So, but for the you and I that were cruising, you wouldn't have known, you'd just be like, wait, we're back in Singapore. And of course, everybody got refunded for the extra day that they missed out on, right? So, uh, and then we did cancel that following voyage just to be safe, to give that extra cleaning and everything. So we, again, when it comes to health and safety, that is priority number one across the board. Right now with our destinations, you are gonna be doing a shore excursion with us. As protocols change, as these vaccines roll out, obviously things will change down the pipeline as well. So this is the current situation, but this most likely will change down the pipeline. And for our crew members, one of the biggest things is that we're basically having them in their own little bubble as well. So they're not combined with all of the crew, they're basically broken into sections in well, and they're in certain sections around the ship. So again, we're really uh, trying to quarantine everything down as far as we can. So that is a real quick high level overview. There's a lot more in depth that I am skipping right by because I could probably talk for about another six hours otherwise just on health yeah. and safety. 
Well, it's just amazing no. at how much um, how much was already in place, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But but how uh, I'm I'm just so impressed with all the cruise lines at how they've really taken it to heart and they're and they're just putting the health and the safety of the guests first, and they're just not not doing it unless they can do it right, which it's it's really nice to see. And then when you look at all the beautiful pictures, and here we sit sort of tethered to our houses it's it's pretty exciting the prospect of getting out there again oh i know i i honestly can't <laughs> wait i think like i said i was taking cruising for granted before because i was doing five or six cruises a year mostly for work and other things as well and now all, all i want to do is get back on a cruise i can't <laughs> wait again so um now we were talking about like the mustard drill as well earlier now you were saying you did a cruise a little while ago and I was just in February. It was my last year now. I guess it's been almost a year. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. So if for anybody that hasn't cruised before, a mustard drill is on that first day of the cruise, traditionally, generally around four o'clock, you have to go to your room, you get your life jacket and you head out to the deck. And we basically, in case of emergency, you know what's going on. And we've tried to evolve from that. So originally we said, you know what, you don't worry about the life jacket. We've already got it at the station. We then evolved to the next step saying, you know, what, if we're doing Alaska cruise, for example, it's cold outside. So we actually have you go to certain lounges and we can check you off there. Now to the next phase, because we don't want to bundle everybody together. Uh, we've actually introduced what's called Muster Station 2.0. A lot of people in the world now obviously have smartphones, tablets, etc. So you can actually do the lifeboat drill from either your phone or tablet. If you don't have have either you can do it from your tv in your stateroom so this actually explains where you go in case of an emergency i would still recommend going down finding that floor seeing where you are um, all our crew members are trained on this they know in case of an emergency where you're going and what to do this is embedded in every one of our crew members it's basically like their main job and then their second job is their entertainment on board kind of thing right so this is uh, something that we take very serious. We were, again, working on this before COVID, but we pushed extra hard to get this out as soon as we could. And we've open sourced this, so all cruise lines are welcome to use this technology as well. So this is really awesome to see. And if you've done, if you've cruised before and you know about uh, the mustard drill, you'll know how exciting this is too. It's really, it's really great because, I mean, COVID aside, it, it's just a really... For me, it's just a, it's the one thing I didn't like about cruising, honestly. I didn't, mm. it's just, you have to go out there and, and you're all kind of gathered together and sometimes the weather's not grateful. And now it's, you're eliminating that whole piece. So yeah. how nice you can sit there with your cup of tea or whatever in your stateroom. It's awesome. Yeah. Now, just backtracking out of curiosity, I, I, uh, Kathy, throwing you, throwing you a curveball here. What would you say for cruise ships in general across the board, when, when you get to, like, let's pre-COVID world. So what would you say the average embarkation time is to get from your taxi through security, getting onto the ship, going to your steering? What do you think that average is across all the different lines out there? What do you think? Well, I mean, it does it really does depend on the, on the line you're going on. But I mean, you're, you're looking at a couple hours anyway, two, three hours for sure. Yeah. And, and it can this be a lot longer, depending a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one area we really pride ourselves on because we do have the largest cruise ships in the world. We're larger than many by most. And we knew right off the bat, if we get that embarkation wrong and you're at a two hour or longer embarkation, there's no way you're going to be cruising with us again because you're going to be so frustrated. So we are so proud with our Oasis class, which are the largest ships in the world. The average boarding from taxi to your stateroom is 30 minutes. Wow. So that's your average boarding time we've been able to enhance that with our quantum class a little bit as well and meaning once we got our quantum class doing that our two newest oasis class ships have also adapted the same little piece of technology the average boarding time from taxi to stateroom is 14 minutes That's 14 crazy. minutes from taxi to stateroom so what we really pride ourselves on is the space per ratio these ships have most of the times a lot of these ports we own our own ports now so being able to design the ports we invest upwards of a billion dollars into each of these ports so to really invest in the infrastructure to make the process actually work is fabulous so when you can get on the ship in under half an hour versus again we went on an average there's like you said there's some ships that are going to be way less as well and then there's going to be some that are way higher but i agree with your numbers of what you said as well so um one thing that I love with like an Oasis class ship, and which is going to be interesting right now, we're cruising at about half the occupancy. So we're not cruising at 100% occupancy. And so when you 
look at even at 25% less, that's almost the equivalent of removing an entire regular cruise ship off of us, <laughs> like the math wise. So your space per ratio on a large ship really is quite incredible. And knowing you've got the multiple restaurants and the multiple showrooms, this really helps us out. So uh, that the, the size of these ships, especially more than ever, are really in our favor. So just something to kind of put in the back of the mind as Interesting. well. Interesting. Yeah. Um, also, too, if anybody is cruising, I think a lot of companies have kind of put these different focuses out there again. So we want you to be able to cruise with confidence. If you were to look at a cruise and you're like, you know what, Kathy, I want to book today. I'm, I want, I'm thinking of getting away next uh, next December. Uh, again, if something goes wrong, anything, I don't like the color of the sky right up to 48 hours. I can cancel. I can get myself 100% future cruise credit to put towards to a later date as well. We don't want, we want you to have that flexibility. So it doesn't need to be a COVID related scenario. It's just, I don't want to go. You can cancel right up to 48 hours prior. So that's great. We still recommend, obviously, travel insurance, of course, because there's a lot of other unforeseens out there and you might have a lot of other components between your air and everything else that you've got going. So um, there's a lot of different ships that we have, all different ships and sizes. I, again, I could talk about this just on this one slide for six hours straight, but <laughs> I'm just giving you a quick little kind of overview. If we work our way from the far right where it says the Oasis class, you'll see those four ships, they're pretty much identical. So those are all the same style of ship, Oasis being the original, then the Allure, Harmony, then Symphony. And then the Quantum class is our newest class. So it's actually slightly smaller than the Oasis. And you'll see the size kind of shrinking down as we kind of work our way down across to the left-hand side. Um, our Radiance class ships, those ships are beautiful. They, they really kind of make me feel kind of like, uh, they've just got never a bad view. Like they're, I think if you were to lay all the glass down, it equals three football fields in length. So just stunning views everywhere you look. So cruising along. Uh, one thing uh, to share, we actually own multiple islands around the world. Uh, I, I assume, Kathy, you've been to a few different cruise lines, private islands over the years? I have, yeah. Yeah. I, um, before working for Royal Caribbean, I worked on quite a few other lines. And one, of the, one other cruise line that would have the same situation that we have here at Royal Caribbean is you'll notice there is a dock there right and actually i'm going to skip over to our other one of our islands this is called labadee and labadee we invested a lot of money into this and we put into a real pier and we found that what happened was the difference versus i'm going to go back an image this island here that did not have a dock many times we would skip this particular port because it was too rough and too windy and i experienced that with this other cruise line i worked on that most times we didn't go there because it was too rough and too windy and it just wasn't safe and again safety is priority number one for everybody across the board so with labity investing and we put that real dock into place we found not only were we docking more often but our guests experience our ratings were that much higher because everybody was so happy to get off the ship they could walk off they didn't have to take a tender so Labadee was the first original island where we offered like the thrill, where you've kind of got everything from the zip lining across over the quay to roller coasters going throughout the jungle to the chill side of the island where you can relax and flop and kick up your feet and have your peace and quiet. So we took this concept and brought that back over to Coco Cay. We invested $250 million into Coco Cay and transformed it to become the perfect day at Coco Cay. Okay? And the biggest part being that dock, that was fabulous. So um, now, obviously we've got a lot of people that are watching this video and everybody I'm sure has a different idea of what their perfect day is. I bet you what your idea of a perfect day is very different than what my idea now with a two-year-old is a perfect day kind of thing as well. What, what, would, you pref would you prefer to be riding water slides or sitting more on a overwater bungalow sipping a, sipping a margarita kind of thing? I'd be somewhere in the water doing water sports for me. All right. Okay, well, I will find your path, okay? So <laughs> starting off, here's somewhere in the water offhand. This is one of the large, it actually is the largest freshwater pool in all of the Caribbean. Uh, if you have a drink package on the ship, your boozy package works on the island. If you have an internet package on the ship, your internet package works on the island. So you can do that if you wish. Uh, so this is kind of around in the center area of the island. And this is a, a big fan favorite. This would have been my pre- having a, a little one uh, area I would like to hang out with. Actually, I think I have a really cool video. Tell me if this, is my background, is it changing behind me here? Yeah, I can see this it. Is just a, 
a short little video here. And this is per, uh, the Cocoa Beach Club. And this section is just so beautiful. You're looking to flop and relax and you want that exclusive feeling. You've got that over here as well. So I'll show you actually a little bit more of that. Let me hop back over to my suite over here. Uh, all right. So co oh, where I changed. Oh, I just changed suites. I'm into this suite now. That's okay. All right. Cocoa Beach Club. So first off, if you are to enter into the Cocoa Beach Club area, uh, there's this higher end restaurant that you actually have access to. Uh, nice little uh, infinity pool. There's only so many guests that have access into this area. Uh, the restaurant has like steak, lobster, grouper. So it really just enhances that cruise experience. And then you have access to also the different from the overwater bungalows, which are definitely a great way to go. So if I was if I was going now as my multi generational group, this is something that I would be looking at for sure is checking out one of our overwater bungalows. And we were talking about that actually just a little bit earlier, eh? Yeah, it now, sounds fantastic. One thing I know you pointed out, and you're like, it, it sounds almost too good to be true. Um, if you are entering into the Cocoa Beach Club, there is an extra charge of hundred dollars per person to access this section. However, if you are to get a cabana, I'm just going to use this one on the beach, for example, uh, this is approximately about $800. But if there is eight of us in the group, it includes the cover charge for all of us. So essentially, if there is eight of us going in, it's like the cabana essentially is free in a roundabout way. So I just think it's a great way to really enhance your cruise experience um, if you want to kind of take it to that next level. If you're not interested, you're like, no, you know what? I like the water sports. That's all I want to do. I just want to get my feet in the water and I just want to walk out there and get wet. Absolutely. Actually, just you're going to want to make your way over about this section. You see where my hand is over here? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna, I think I've actually got it. This is that little, that little dot going that right there is this little swim out bar offhand. Now, most days you can just walk out here and you're probably at about knee height at this point. And from here, you can walk for miles and you will be maybe somewhere between your ankle and knee height. It just walks for miles. And if you did want to get more into like the jet skiing and the parasailing and all that, you go around a little further around the island and you've got that hole as well. So depending on what you're looking for, you're going to find your, your section for what you're looking for. So, and then now that I have a, a two-year-old, so next time we cruise, we'll probably, he'll be three at that time. This is where I will be is over in the Thrill Water Park area. That is the tallest water slide in all of North America, which truly scared the bejesus out of me the first time I did it. Um, I didn't think I was a very hairy person. I was using the GoPro and I could see my arm hair kind of flipping along as I was going down that thing. It is pretty incredible, I have to say. So, uh, I can't wait to get back on here. I think when with my little guy, we'll be using the smaller slide to start, but this will be a, a neat little area. So there's all different areas for which age groups, et cetera. Obviously the main slides are our are, uh, are, are younger teens, adults, uh, et cetera as well. So um, from here, this would be another fan favorite for me. I, as a grown adult, I just thought this was kind of cool as a wave pool. It turns on and off every 15 minutes. So just another area I kind of went by, had a little bit of a splash to cool down, continued kind of walking around my way as well. Tons of different restaurants around. There's lots of complimentary restaurants. We have a couple other paid restaurants, depending on what you're looking for. But if you just want to have a burger and fries or sandwich or a buffet, you're going to find that all around the island as well. Just to kind of showcase, most of our Oasis class ships will go to perfect day. It, trying to find an itinerary that does that is always, I would recommend. Usually we flip flop one week west, one week east. Um, one itinerary that really caught my eye, I am a big fan. The Mariner of the Seas is doing these eight night Bermuda cruises. And Bermuda is one of my favorite locations. You've been to Bermuda, haven't you, Kathy? It's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. The pink sand beaches on the one side, white white sand on the other, just feel so safe, such a great destination. So to be able to go down to perfect day, still touches into Nassau and then over in the three triple overnight in Bermuda, really, really awesome. And the Mariner of the Seas just had a massive application, meaning completely um, big facelift to her. The ship looks absolutely stunning. So even though she's a few years old, this ship looks unreal so that's one that just caught my eye that uh i might be cruising on hopefully on that itinerary I, yeah it sounds like that just might be your next <laughs> yeah i think so yeah um now one thing of course we like to we always take our guests 
uh, we, what our guests are saying, how their experiences are, but we also listen to a lot of our trade, like yourself, of your feedback of clever designs and things to do. And a lot of the trade, obviously, side was we should do overnight stays. Well, after we were doing the overnight stays, we tested it out at Perfect Day, and we found only about 3% of the guests actually got off at the end of the night. So after you've been out at that island all day long and experiencing the sunshine and uh, you come back, you have a nap, have a shower, head off to dinner, and now the ship comes to life. You're off to the show, you're doing different things around. Nobody was really getting off the ship at the end of the night, right? So we found it was just better to actually head off, cruise away so you can catch that sunset as we cruise away and then come back a, a second time. So there's a few of these ships that you can see that have a little star or a little heart on it that will actually go to Perfect Day twice in a single voyage. Some that will actually go over to our other private island as well. So to kind of just wrap up, that was a little quick little overview of just the Perfect Day and, and Lava D. Just to touch a little closer quickly on our own backyard. So Alaska, obviously, uh, very close to home. We actually have four ships cruising to Alaska. We've got one ship doing round trip Vancouver. We've got one ship doing northbound, southbound. I think that's one of the best cruise experiences for sure, is if you want to be able to do the cruise tour and get up and truly see Denali and National Parks. If you're cruising as like the multi-generational group, the big group, or you're with your bubble, I think heading down to Seattle and doing one of the quantum or ovation ships, because these ships just offer so much on board. Uh, I would really recommend that, especially for that multi-generational or the bubble travel, for sure, those two ships are spectacular. This is just a quick little uh, image of a few of the things that are offered on those ships out of Seattle offhand. So that's skydiving at sea. We've got a flow rider, surf simulator, uh, bumper cars. These activities are all free. There's no extra charges. These are all included in your cruise fare as well. That's a robot bartender too down there on the bottom left, the bionic bar. Um, and then you might've saw this image at the beginning. This is called North Star. It's this giant crane that will take you all the way up in the air, hang you off, off the side of the ship and gives you these big, beautiful panoramic views as well. So uh, just something to kind of check out there. And then to kind of segue into a few of our state rooms, our inside state room, that up in the top left is an 85 inch LED TV hooked up to live cameras around the ship. So if you have to have an inside state room, get the one with the virtual balcony, but obviously nothing beats the balcony state room. Being able to open your balcony, have that fresh air, sit out there, order your room service. You can have your eggs benedict and your champagne as you're cruising into a destination is really the way to do it. And if you want to take it to that next level, uh, you can head into like one of the suites like I'm in right now. Um, some of our ships are bigger ships like the Oasis. We've actually got a central park area where if you were to take the Eiffel Tower, pop it on site, it would fit in it. There's over 14,000 trees and plants. Um, but uh, we actually have balconies that face inward to there. And then we get into our loft suites, these bigger ones. So just uh, you can kind of see what these kind of look like as well. And then we actually, just before I wrap up here, one funny thing is on our, are we actually had our chairman and he was traveling with his family on board and his grandkids were like, why don't you have like, like a slide in here? So he took one of our Royal Loft Suites and they converted it to become the ultimate family suite. And it has got every bell and whistle you can think of in there. But from a slide that goes from that top section out down on the bottom, they've got their own little rock climbing wall in there. They, you think it, they've got it down there. But three bathrooms, uh, parent's side looks very swanky, full butler service, you name it. And my favorite, favorite, favorite room of them all though, this is all the way at the after the ship. We again mentioned we have multiple different showrooms around the ship, but the Aqua Theater this is on our Oasis class is the uh, outdoor theater where these Olympic divers diving from all the way up here into this tiny little pool. But these balconies up here, these are our suites. So right where you see these two people here are standing on this balcony. That is all your private balcony as well. This is a two bedroom villa. So again, if you are traveling with uh, another family or another couple, this is a great way to kind of enhance your cruise experience, right? So I would definitely be looking at the, these two bedroom villas or these grand suites for sure. And Colin, I think earlier when we were chatting, um, we were talking about the four bedroom and you were, you were saying that the combination price by the time you take and add the, um, the cost of the extra uh, things that you get with it, the butler and whatnot, it's mm -hmm. actually comes out to almost the same as it would be as if you just got four separate units. So what a yep, great thing absolutely. to be able to gather your little, your private group, your bubble up on your balcony and watch the shows. 
Yeah, yeah, it really enhances the full, the full Royal Genie, the butler service. You get the drink package, you get a dining package, Wi-Fi, grass, you name it. It's all bundled in there. And you you can actually sleep up to 16 people in this combination if you really wanted to. But uh, I think for most people, I think the two-bedroom aquatheater is, is really calling her name, but that gives all those same amenities as well. So, Spectacular. Um, and just to wrap up on the final link, obviously we cruise all around the world. You name it, we're cruising there as well. Um, and we're we'll have our new itineraries opening very, very soon for 2023. We're really proud to kind of win these constant accolades year after year. I actually do need to update these. The slide is out of date. I have to, I apologize. It is 18 years consecutive for best cruise line overall and 18 years for best entertainment overall as well. So we were obviously doing something right. Uh, to, to continue to win these accolades. So so hopefully well, I kind of was a quick overview. <laughs> yeah, Colin, that was great. Thank you so much. And I think, uh, well, a number of things. One is um, kudos for all the work that you guys have done on the safety protocols, because I think while you already were outstanding in that regard, you've really taken it up a notch. And I think people can feel very confident that you're going to be very, very safe on, on board your ships. And then um, the other piece is, you know, I know a lot of our clients absolutely love the multi-generational capacity, but I think moving forward, we're going to see a lot more, um, not just multi-generational, but groups of friends that want to go together that maybe have a little diverse interests. And I think that mm -hmm. Royal Caribbean really does have a great um, capability to make everyone's everyone's experience perfect. So I think that's yep. great. Um, yep. And I have not personally been to um, the best day. Is that what we're calling it? The best day? Perfect day. Um, perfect day. <laughs> I have not been on that, uh, on that island yet. Now I'm, I'm especially now looking out at my, my gray window, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that looks so, it does look like the perfect day. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. So I'd like to get out there and check that out myself at some point. So really, really have enjoyed your presentation. So thank you for joining us. Awesome. Well, Great. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I could talk all day long about any of those sectors, but I actually was looking at my personal photos of Perfect Day and I was just reminiscing. I was like, gosh, I'd love to get back there. And it was funny. One thing I didn't say in there, and I remembered it when I was looking at my photos, was how many lifeguards that we actually have that live on the island. There is actually over 100 lifeguards that live on the island. So, wow, what a job. Yeah. <laughs> safety priority number one but that's yeah I think they're all getting their tans really well <laughs> lovely well that's really great and I think now you know as as we were saying earlier too there's they're taking a smaller capacity on the ships for the next while so great time once we are allowed to get out there again um, and let's hope that we can before too many months passes by and we can get out there and explore again but I think it'd be a great time to take advantage of that and and uh, I, I for one can certainly see I've got uh, three adult children that would absolutely love to, mm -hmm. to spend, a, spend a week out on there or more. So yep. we'll have to take a look at that. But thanks again, we'll have you back again. And thank you. of course, you've always got some great subjects. So we'll never have never have a dull chat with you. So thank you for joining us. Awesome, and well, th thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining us today. We, um, we're having a little diversion for our next week's show. So not quite sure who's gonna be on with us yet, but of course it will always be somebody fabulous. It'll be a good surprise. So we'll let you know about that later on, but thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you again next week on Departures Lounge.